Johnson showed strong mathematical abilities from an early age. Because Greenbrier County did not offer public schooling for African American students past the eighth grade, her parents arranged for her and her siblings to attend high school in Institute West Virginia. This school was on the campus of West Virginia State College. After graduating from high school at the age of 14, Johnson enrolled at West Virginia State. And West Virginia State was a historically black college. As a student, she took every math course offered at the college. She was known at NASA for calculating trajectories for NASA missions. She received the Congressional Gold Medal, and she was 102 years old, and she just died last year in 2020 in February. The, that was our Black History Moment. Now, as we move on to our service, our scripture comes from James 4, 7 through 8. James 4, 7 through 8, and it reads, So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. So how can we come close to God? How can we draw close to God and God draw close to us? Well, James gives us five ways. He says, humble yourselves before God. Yield to his authority and will. Commit your life to him in his control and be willing to follow him. Next, we have to resist the devil. Don't allow Satan to entice, to, uh, entice and tempt you. Next, wash your hands and purify your hearts. That is, lead a pure life. Replace the desire to sin with the desire to experience God's purity. Next, let there be tears for what you have done. Don't be afraid to express deep, heartfelt sorrow for what you have done. Next, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. To be humble involves leaning on his power and guidance and not going on your own independent way. So I don't know about you, but I want to be close to God, and I want God to be close to me. I want God to hear me, so I have to do my part. The verse says, come close to God, and God will come close to you. So we have something that we have to do because we want God to come on by here. Our song this morning is Come By Here, Lord. Come by here, Lord. Come by here. Come by here. Come by here. Come by here, Lord. Come by here. Oh, Lord, come by here. Some crying Lord come by here someone's crying Lord come by here somebody's crying Lord come by here oh Lord come by here someone's praying Lord come by here someone's praying Lord come by here someone's praying Lord come by
Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus of Christ, we come. God, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity. We thank you, Father, for blessing us and keeping us. Lord, we glorify your name for just being good and being God. We thank you for another privilege to come before you, Father God, to hear from you by way of your word. We pray that you bless us today. Bless us, Father God, that we will hear from you, that your word will fall on good soil, that men, women, boys, and girls will see life anew. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Here, Lord. Even though we know that he is God who is omnipresent, he's a God that is in all places at the same time, we want his presence to be made known. Amen and thank the name of Jesus for who he is and what he has already done. Let me call your attention to Acts chapter 16, the book of Acts, the chapter 16, verses are 35 through 40. Acts chapter 16, verses 35 through 40. You've heard in your hearing this morning, Brother Whitlock delivered the message in Sunday school. And uh, we want to look at that pericope that was left out. There were a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of scriptures that were really left out. So we want to look at this particular pericope, verses 35 through 40 in Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 verses 35 through 40. When you found it, you will discover these words. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the officer saying, let those men go. So the keeper of the prison reported these words to Paul saying, the magistrates have sent to you, let you go, have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. But Paul said to them, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned Romans, and have thrown us in prison. And now they put us out secretly. No, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. And the officers told them the word, told these words to the magistrates. And they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. Then they came and pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them to depart from the city. So they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia and when they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them and departed. I want to talk about hidden figures. Hidden, hidden figures. Today, Sister Davis has presented to us four hidden figures that are worthy to be looked upon, even in the world that we live in the 21st century. She mentioned the three hidden figures of NASA, the three giants, the three women who, who went about taking abuse, but they changed the world, and the world will never be the same. She mentioned Katherine Johnson. She mentioned Dorothy Vaughn, as well as Mary Johnson. And not only that, she mentioned today our very own Sister Johnny Woods. These four women have gone and changed the world as we know it forever. 
Yes, the world has been changed because of their intelligence. The world has been changed because of their contributions in the world in which we live. This world is made different because of Katherine Johnson, because of the intelligence of Dorothy Vaughn, and because of the intellect of Mary Jackson. And no doubt, uh, Sister Johnny Woods has changed not only this world, but has changed our lives here at the New Beginning Church. Her support has made the difference. Her prayers have made the difference. And yes, there are many others who are right here at our church today that have made a difference in the world in which we live. Many of them, if I dare say all of them, sometimes are hidden figures. It is those who are not named. It is those who are not sought after. It is those who, whose names are never called in the assembly. But they have made quite a difference in the life in which we live. Certainly NASA would not have made the first orbit around the earth. Yes, without those three women, and certainly our church today wouldn't be what it is today without the influence of Sister Johnny Woods. These are hidden figures that may not be named among others. Let me thank Sweetie and Sister Paralee Shivers for reaching out for, for, for recognizing hidden figures among our midst. I want to say to you today that there are some hidden figures even in the text. There are some hidden figures even in the word of God. There are some hidden figures. There are some people who, whose names have not been called. There are some people who are labeled by things, but their names are not being called. When we look in 1 Kings, we, we find that those names who haven't been called. When we look at 2 Kings, we, we find a, a little girl that goes on and tells us, that life can be the better, Elijah. Go down to the prophet Elijah. Elijah says that he can make a difference. Elijah tells Naaman to go and watch. Go and watch seven times in the nasty Jordan. We don't give enough attention to the little girl that recognized Elijah. We don't give attention to the, the little girl who made the difference, who sent Naaman down and and we don't give enough attention to the soldier that said, Master, if he had not told you some great thing to do, if he hadn't told you what great thing to do, you would have done it without even complaining. But all he said is go down and watch. We, we, don't, we don't pay attention to, to the centurion soldier that said, he says that surely this must be the son of God on Calvary. And so today I want to lift some women from the text as well as men. And before I do that, I want to make sure that you understand, regardless of who you are, regardless of where you've been, regardless of how bad your situation has been, you can be used by God. God is looking forward to using you. Matthew chapter 1 records Four women that were used by God. Matthew chapter 1 records women that made a difference in the world in which we live. Matthew chapter 1 mentioned a woman that didn't have it all together. Matthew chapter 1 mentions Tamar. Tamar was guilty of sleeping with a father-in-law. Let me just tell you, Tamar was guilty of sleeping with a father-in-law. Uh, Tamar was not one who looked like she ought to be somebody that would be recognized years later. But Tamar, we recognize her today because Tamar was in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Let me just stop and tell you today, whether, whether you are a black, whether you are brown, whether you are yellow, let me just say to you today, you are special in the sight of God. I want to say to you, whether you got it all together, whether you are not doing the right thing, whether you've been down and out, God is looking to use you. I want to say to you today that even if you messed around with the wrong man and done the wrong thing, if you messed around with the wrong woman and got caught up in the wrong mess, God can still use you. 
Tamar, 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 Tamar. Tamar was in the lineage of Jesus Christ. The second woman, the second woman that Matthew mentions in Matthew chapter 1 is Rahab. Rahab, Rahab not only was a prostitute, Rahab had a brothel herself. Rahab had a house full of prostitutes. Rahab was the prostitute owner. Rahab had the house that prostitutes met in. I want to say to you today, if your dealings have not been clean, if your dealings have not been all that God would have them to be, let me just say to you, God can still use you. Rahab was used by God to tell the spies how to get away when they came to survey Jericho. God want to use you today. God want to bless you today. You may be a hidden figure today, but I want to tell you that God can set you on fire. And God can use you. The next woman, the next woman that God, God uses and is mentioned in Matthew chapter 1 is Ruth. Ruth is mentioned. Ruth the Moabite is mentioned. Ruth the Moabite is mentioned in Matthew chapter 1. And you know Ruth has no business being in the lineage of God. Has no business being in the lineage of Jesus Christ because she was a Moabite and, and she worshiped idol God. Her, her background was one that worshiped idol gods. I want to tell you this morning that God can change your worship. God can pull you away from what you used to worship. God can pull you out of worshiping out of God. He did it for Ruth and she married the richest man in town. And she became one who, who called on God that was not the idol God. She called on the true and the living God. I want to say to you this morning, wherever you worship, whatever you worship with, whatever you've been through, God wants you to worship him. He wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. The fourth woman, the fourth woman, the fourth woman that Matthew mentions, that Matthew mentions, he, he mentions this fourth woman. Her name is Mary. She is mother's, the mother of Jesus. She's Jesus' mother. Now you know that Mary don't deserve it to be mentioned in the lineage of Jesus Christ. You know Mary was the talk of the town. She was an unwed mother, was unfit to carry Jesus Christ. Rumors was going around because she had messed over Joseph. Mary did not deserve to be Jesus' mother. But God knows. God can use anybody. Mary, a young girl, God can use you. I want to say to young people today, God can use you. You may be a hidden figure today, but God wants to take you higher and help you to move. Hidden figures oftentimes suffer from being hidden figures because others won't recognize them. But I say to you this morning, if others don't recognize you, don't be concerned. Don't be caught up. Don't be moved by the fact that others won't recognize you. You need to make sure you stick with God. And when God recognizes you, it's all right. God is able to bless you real good. God is able to keep you. God is able to do great things through you and, and able to do great things in you. You see, the problem, one, one reason why we are still hidden figures, one reason why we still are not recognized by the almighty God, one reason why we are not recognized by other men is because we limit ourselves. We have fallen short. We, we have limited ourselves, and, and we are still beating ourselves up even over those things that God has built up in us. God has forgiven us, but we're still beating ourselves up. We have limited ourselves. I, I, I picked up a cup. It's a ketchup cup. I picked up a cup. It's a, it's a, a mustard cup. I picked up a to-go cup. It's the same cup you, you put mustard in. It's the same cup you put ketchup in at your local fast food restaurant. Whether you go to Jack in the Box. Or to Burger King, you have this cup. The problem that I've always had with this cup is that I always have to get three and four of these cups in order to put it on my sandwich and my french fries. 
But I, I heard, and this is not an original announcement. This is not a really original analogy. But, but I, I saw this cup had pleaks in it. This cup got little pleaks in it. And when I look at the cup, and I fill the cup up, I fill the cup up, and it only takes one scoop to fill it up. This cup as it is, it can only be filled up. It only takes one scoop to fill up this cup. It's because I've limited myself. I have called myself short. I have gotten to the point where I am hidden, a hidden figure because I have hidden talents that have not been revealed. We, we have not exposed our talents. We, we have not thought through things. We, we have not let God bless us in a righteous way. So I can fill this cup up with one little scoop. I, I take a scoop. I fill the cup up. And the cup is filled. I can't get anything else in it. The cup is filled. I want to say to you today, my dear, that you got to look at the cup not as half empty. But you got to look at the cup as half full. But I say to you today, you must know that your potential can grow. This cup can grow. This, this cup can grow, I tell you. I, I can only get one scoop in the cup, but there are pleats in the cup. There are folds in the cup. And if I just take this cup and pull out the pleats... If I just take this cup and remove some of the pleats, if I just take this cup and, and, and adjust itself, if I just take this cup and move beyond what I, I was supplied with, now I got a bigger cup. And I, not only will one scoop get in the cup, but I tell you, two scoops will get in the cup. And before it runs over, two and a half scoops will get in the cup. It's because we've limited ourselves. We've limited ourselves to one little cup. The cup that they've given us. The cup that they've supplied. But if we broaden our horizon. Yes. If we move differently. If we pray mightily. We can get enough in the cup that can bless us. That's why we have black Americans. We have Asian Americans. We have, we have Hispanics that can do great things because their cups have been expanded. Your horizon has been expanded. Your thinking has been different. And when you look at the text this morning, we find there's a little girl. And there's a girl that's walking behind Paul and walking behind Silas. And this girl in the text, in verse number 17 of Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse number 17, there's a, there's a girl there. And this girl is following Paul and following Silas. And this girl is saying, these are great men of the most high God. These men are servants of the most high God. They proclaim to us the way of salvation. These men are great men of God. They proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she said every day for many days. First look at the text. At the first glance of the text, there's nothing wrong with this girl. There's nothing wrong with this girl saying that these men are men of God and they certainly show us the way of salvation. Yes, she was right, but her motives were wrong. Let me just say to you today, when you got the wrong motives, you confining yourself to a little bitty cup. When you have the wrong motives in mind, you confining yourself. You need to seek God while he may be found. When you look at what you've been given, God is looking for you to expand what you've been given so you can get two and a half time into what you've been given. I stopped by to tell you today there's nothing wrong with this girl proclaiming that these are men of God. There's nothing wrong with her proclaiming that me, these men of God are, are the way, uh, explaining to us the way of salvation. But the problem is she got the wrong motives. The, the other problem with this girl who is a hidden figure. 
The other problem with this girl is that not only does she have the wrong motive, She's making money for the crooks. <laughs> yeah, there's something wrong. There's something wrong because this girl was used by the crooks to make money. This girl was used by those who would sit back and watch her make money for them. That's a problem. That's a problem because she was making money for the crooks. I want to say to you today, whatever you do, don't let folk use you in the wrong way. Don't let folk use you for the wrong thing. Don't let people use you to do the wrong thing the wrong way. Let me just say to you, stay with the Lord. The third thing that's wrong with this girl, the third thing that's wrong with this girl, and it's the biggest thing, the biggest thing that's wrong with her is the fact that she had a demon in her. She had an evil spirit in her. She had a spirit in her that made it look like she knew God. She had a spirit that made it look like she knew him. And this spirit, Paul got sick and tired of it. Matter of fact, the Bible says it began to annoy Paul. This girl in her speech by way of the devil began to annoy Paul. And Paul commanded this spirit to come out of her. I command you in the name of Jesus the Christ to come out of her. And the Bible says this spirit left her. And when the spirit left her, there were those who were crooks. <laughs> there were those who were in charge of her. There were those who were making money off of her. And the text declares this girl was making money for the authorities. It tells us this morning, just because you can get elected <laughs> doesn't mean that you're going to do the right thing. <laughs> It tells us this morning that there are some crooks even who have been placed in office. It tells us this morning that there are some people who find themselves crooked even if they said they weren't going to be crooked. Let me tell you this morning, just because they get elected, just because they make promises, does not, does not mean that they're going to hold up their bargain of the deal. It says they were in the authority. It was the authorities. It was those in power that was using this girl for their own selfish gain. Let me just say to you today, if you're in authority, if you have power, make sure you don't use other people. If you're in authority, if you have power, make sure that, that you don't use people in the wrong way. If you're in command, make sure you do it God's way because God is the one that's watching and the God that we serve is not sleep. He is alive. Yes. These authorities got upset and they took Paul to those magistrates in charge and they locked Paul inside us up. But the Bible says... At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and the very foundation of the jail shook. The very foundation of the jail rocked. The very foundation of the jail, an earthquake came, and the foundation of the jail shook. And it shook in a violent way, so much so, until the chains dropped off the prison. Not only did it drop off Paul and Silas, but it dropped off all the prisons that were locked up. Yeah, they locked Paul and Silas up because they had called out this demon. Let me tell you, you can go to prison for something you didn't do wrong. You can get locked up for a long time and you are innocent and not guilty. Let me just share with you today, everybody that's locked up did not get caught in the act. I want to say to you, somebody lied on somebody. Somebody misused somebody. Somebody did somebody wrong. I want to tell you that everybody that's in jail didn't go to jail because they did something wrong. Paul and Simon was in jail because they did what was right. I want to say to you, as you set other folks free, as you deliver the message to other people, sometimes the authorities will come against you. The Bible says they locked up Paul and Simon. And when they locked up Paul and Silas, the Bible declares that at midnight, verse number 25, it says, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sung hymns to God. I, I want to say to you that midnight is the darkest part of the day. Somebody listening to me this morning may be in their midnight situation. Things may have gone wrong with you. Things may have been messed up with you. 
Things may have been going in a way that you don't approve of. Things may be shaking you up right now. But you just make sure you keep on praying and keep on singing to God. The Bible says at midnight, the worst time of the night, at midnight, the darkest part of their lives, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang. The Bible declares that when Paul and Silas prayed and sang, the prisoners, the, prison, the prisoners, the prisoners heard them. And they began to rejoice with them. But the big thing is the jail shook. The chains fell off. Let me tell you, if you want the chains to fall off, in the midst of your midnight, if you want the chains to fall off, if you want the doors to fly wide open, just keep singing, just keep praying in the midnight hour. Yeah, it's at midnight. It is, it is at midnight. See, the doctor knows it's at midnight. That is the darkest hour of the night. So when you go to the doctor, the doctor will tell your relative if he can make it through the night. <laughs> because the doctor knows there are struggles in the midnight. There are struggles late at night. And if you're struggling with something now, just keep praying. And just keep singing. And the, the chain will fall off. The chain fell off. And the sleeping jail, the sleeping security guard, the sleeping police officer <laughs> woke up and he was about to kill himself because he realized that the doors were open. He realized, now this jailer is another hidden figure. <laughs> His name isn't called. <laughs> they didn't call him out by name. His name isn't called. He is walking in anonymity. He doesn't know, we don't know who he is, but one thing we know about him, he, he got to a point where he wanted to commit suicide. Paul and Silas speaks out and said, do yourself no harm. We're all here. I want to tell you today that sometimes God will take the chains off. Sometimes God will open the doors wide up and you don't have to move. God will speak for you. Right here in the text, it says that we are all here. And now let me tell you, I know, I know if you're in jail and the doors are open and I know if the chains drop from your leg and your arm, I know you're going to say, look at what God has done. But in this case, Paul and Silas stayed right there. The other prisoners stayed right there because Jesus had to be glorified. Yeah, they stayed right there. They stayed right there. They stayed right there. They stayed right there. They, they stayed. They didn't move. Let me tell you, somebody is moving and you're moving too fast. Somebody is moving and you're moving the wrong way. Don't go anywhere until you hear from the Lord. Stay where you are. Do what you got to do. Stay in what you're in until the Lord tells you to move. And then when the Lord tells you to move, you better run and move. Amen. The Bible says, then he called, verse number 29, then he called for a light. The, the, the jailer called for a light. He ran in. He trembled. He fell down before Paul and Silas. And he asked this famous question, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Let me tell you, God can take you to prison and he can get you out. God can take you some places where, where he wants you to minister to somebody else. God will take you some places where you can see other things going on around you and you can minister in a bad situation. You may be in your midnight situation right now. You may be in a bad situation right now. But I want to tell you, God is trying to use you even in your bad situation. You see, you've been sick for five years in order to take five minutes to get somebody else delivered from your sickness. God has blessed us. God has, has built in us some hidden potential. This hidden potential is the reason why we are hidden figures. And it's all right to be a hidden figure because this hidden potential will sooner or later come out. Paul and Silas represent this jailer who is a hidden figure. They blessed him and he came to Jesus. The jailer came to Jesus. The jailer came to Jesus. The jailer came to Jesus. The one that was watching over them came to Jesus. Then the magistrates, these are men that's equal to the city council. The city council person sent a message by the police officer. Go and tell the jailer to
to let those men go. Go and tell a jailer to let them go. Now we see Paul and Silas are hidden figures. They are hidden figures because at this point, they didn't know that they were Romans. Because had they known that they were Romans, they wouldn't have locked them up in the first place. You see, in Rome, they deal with Romans differently. In Rome, they deal with Roman accusations differently. But they locked up Paul and Silas after the people had beat them. So he sends the police officer to tell the jailer that you can go now. And the jailer tells Paul and Silas that the men, the, the city council, those in authority say you can leave now. The Bible says that Paul refused to leave. The Bible says that, that Silas didn't move. They refused to leave. And the reason why they refused to leave is because they beat them in the street in public. They messed over them in public. They abused them in public. They persecuted them in public. They prosecuted them in public. And now Paul and Silas want to know, if you did all that in public, why are you trying to let us go in secret? See, what I'm telling you today is, if you mess up in public, you ought to repent in public. If you mess up in public, you ought to get it right in public. You ought not do a sinful thing in public and then wash your hands of it in secret because the God who watches over us, he saw us do it in public and he's looking forward to us to get it right in public. So Paul and Silas said, we ain't, we ain't going nowhere. Leave the doors open. Leave the chains off. Leave the exit for us to leave all that you want to. But we are not going anywhere until the magistrates show up, until the city council show up. They put y'all up to do their dirty deed. Let me just share you with you right now. Don't let other people throw a rock and hide their hands. Don't let other people put you up to doing something that is wrong and then that they are never called out. Don't let other people get you to do things that they wouldn't do. Don't let other people walk around and get you to do things that they won't even afford to do, but then they want to push you out there. Paul and Silas said, we ain't going nowhere. We're not going anywhere. We're not moving. We're not getting out of jail. We're not going anywhere until they come down here. Until they let us go. Until they set us free. Now they done beat us in public. They messed over us in public. And now they want to set us free in secret. And that's how men do it. They'll mess over you in public. God deliver me from the supervisor who will always embarrass you in public when he or she think you've done what is wrong. But when they get ready to get it right and they realize that they were wrong, they don't want to come back to the same group that they embarrass you in. I think you need to call a meeting. I think you need to call a meeting with the same group you embarrassed the person in front of. I think you need to call a meeting in the, with the same group and say, I was wrong. Will you forgive me? That's all Paul wanted. That's all Silas wanted. They no, want, no longer wanted to be hidden figures. They were hidden figures because they did not know that they were Romans. And since they found out they were Romans, now they won't let them go in secret. And not only do they want to let them out of jail, but they want them to leave the country. They want them to get out of the city. They want them to depart immediately. And then they put it like this, go in peace. I want to say to you today, when folk mess over you and they know that they're wrong, they don't want you to stand up against them. They want you to go in peace. Now, after they've been violent towards you, they want you to go in peace. That's what's going on in our nation today. Police officers are beating up people in public. They're misusing people in public. And they don't care if they're being recorded or not. They have the attitude, and not all of them, but some of them have the same attitude. Go ahead and record me. Go ahead and do what you do. Go ahead and take pictures. I don't care, because I'm going to get free of it. But here it is, Paul and Silas. After God had created so many miracles around them, they were hidden figures. 
All they were doing was preaching the word of God. All they were doing was setting the captive free. All they were doing was taking the, the cuffs off people's hands and feet. All they were doing was creating another mindset. But they were stretching their cups. I want to stop by to tell you this morning, my dears. Sometimes people will see you stretching your cup. Sometimes God will expand your territory. Sometimes God will increase your wealth. Sometimes God will do things for you that he's not doing for others. I'm saying to you today, don't worry about them. You just keep stretching your cup. Sometimes people will be jealous because God is doing great things for you. And as long as they can give you a ride, as long as they see you on the bus stop, they are on your side. As long as they can lend you a dollar or two, they are for you. But the problem I said to you is, the problem is once you get your own house, once you get your own car, once you get your own job, once they can't do anything else for you, then you a big shot. Then you think you're somebody. But let me tell you, baby, God has given you, has continued to bless you, and he will continue to bless you if you just keep trusting in him. There's a final hidden figure I want to bring out today. His name is Jesus. He is a hidden figure. The Bible teaches that it is our responsibility to show him to the world. That's all that Paul and Silas was doing. They were preaching Jesus and him crucified. It is our responsibility to no longer let Jesus be a hidden figure. Yeah, he was a hidden figure. When you look at Matthew chapter 1, when you go down to the bottom of that chapter, it says that Jesus was a hidden figure. He came down through 42 generations. He was a hidden figure. He left his place in glory. He was a hidden figure. He left his place in glory came down to these mundane shores. He walked with us. He blessed us. John declared that he dwelled among us. He became flesh and dwelled among us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That same Jesus that was a hidden figure became a revealed figure. He walked these shores. Yes, he did. He walked these shores, healing the blind, giving them sight, healing the bit over, giving them erections. He blessed us and he walks with us. He also raised the dead. His name is Jesus. But mean men kept my Lord. Mean men killed my God. Mean men marched him up to Calvary's hill. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. My Lord and my God. He died, I tell you, on a skull hill called Calvary. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because he was going to give Joseph his brand new tomb back. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. He rose for you and he rose for me. You no longer have to be a hidden figure. You no longer have to walk in darkness. You can stand now before the Lord. When he died on Calvary, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. And now we can go boldly before the Lord. All for ourselves. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for opening doors for us. Thank God for the chain dropping off. Thank God for those doors flying open in our lives. There may be somebody here today that have not lived up to your potential in Jesus Christ. You want a new job? Trust Jesus. You want more money? Trust Jesus. You want a better attitude? Trust Jesus. No longer give in to what you see. You got to expand your borders. You got to go places you've never been before. You got to hang out with people that's walking higher than you are. You can't compromise Jesus Christ. Don't compromise your integrity because when you compromise your integrity, you go right back to that limited nature. But when you walk in integrity, 
and you stand for the Lord, you can get two times or more of blessings into the same little cup. You see, every cup you get, whether the cup is, is a job, just like this cup is expanded, God can allow you to expand your cup. God will allow you to be blessed among measure. God will allow you to be able to do even greater things than you've ever done. You got to let God bless you. I say to my African-American brothers and sisters, don't let the hidden figures be the only hidden figures you know about. You're it in your community. Make a difference. Don't let George Carver Washington be the only one. Don't let Benjamin Banneker be the only one. Don't let Marcus Darby Garvey be, the, Garvey be the only one. Don't let Ronald McNair be the only one. Don't let Mae Jemison be the only one. You're the one that God has greatly invested in. Whether you're retired, whether you're working, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're in school or not, Trust God to expand your borders. Trust God to make you a history maker. Trust God to bless you to go from a hidden figure to a recognized figure. Promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west. Promotion comes from above, from God himself. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You can get to know Jesus, the revealed figure that's no longer hidden. His name is Jesus. The door is open. You can trust him today. You may be in your darkest hour. You may be in your darkest moment. But Jesus says, come. God says, come. The Holy Spirit says, come. He wants you to get to know him. The door is open. You can get to know Jesus today. All you have to do is trust him. Believe the story. That Jesus died for your own sin. That Jesus was buried and rose again. And as you go through your darkest moment, God knows how to shake up things. And he's waiting to bless you. Will you join me in prayer and invite Jesus into your life to be your Savior, to be your Lord? Will you trust him? Will you allow him to come into your life and make you whole? Will you join me right now and pray with me? Repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you are now born again. We believe if you die today, you're on your way to heaven. We believe that you have Jesus in your life. Now you need to join. 
and be a part of a good Bible teaching church. I believe that this is the church. You can join the New Beginning Church. Just inbox me and let me know that I received Christ as my Savior. Join this church by inboxing me and letting me know that you'd like to be a part of this body of faith. We'll be glad to welcome you in. We'll be glad to have you a part of our, our congregation. Whether you're near or far, whether you're here or there, you can join the New Beginning Church. Tune in every Sunday at 1045 a.m. We'll be glad to have you. And there may be others of you who are saved and know that you are, but you have not been committed. You have not been committed to Jesus, have not been committed to his church, have not been committed to him at all. Come on back to church. If it's right to be in church, it has to be wrong to be out of church. I invite you to the New Beginning Church. If you struggle with sin like I do, this is the place for you. There are no perfect people and there's no perfect church. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a part of our service. You no longer have to be a hidden figure. As Jesus has been revealed, he wants you to walk with him. He will do things for you that you haven't seen before. He will take you places, introduce you to people that you never thought you would know about. You got to trust Jesus. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you, Father God, for those who are hidden figures. We ask you to encourage them, bless them, and keep them. We pray for Tyler and Liggins. We pray for her family. We pray that you keep them. Lord, we ask you to bless them as they go through their darkest moments. Encourage them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for her being in church. Thank you for her desiring God. I ask you to keep her, Father God. Keep her mind. Keep her heart. Keep her focus. And Lord, we ask you to bless those who have listened. That they will know that they are special. That they are somebody. And the Lord is blessing them. Lord, this is our prayer. We ask you to keep us in the name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. It is now offering time. And it's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offerings, and sacrificial gifts. You can do that by three means. Uh, you can do it by cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. We are trying to move away from cash tag, but many of you have not done Zelle yet. In the meantime, you can send your offering to cash tag NBC Souls. But we want you to really move to Zelle or to the P.O. Box and sending your offering and your tithes in. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail your offering, your tithes, into New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. Seven seven four five nine. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And just remember, allow God to fill you up and make you big enough 
that you can hold all your talents and you can utilize those talents for his kingdom. Allow God to take your places and do things with you. Things that you never dreamed of. The fact of the matter is, if you can do it all by yourself, you don't need God. But the truth of the matter is, we need God every second, every minute, every hour, every day. We need God. Until next time, God bless you and God keep you. We at the New Beginnings Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you. God, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that you have still some hidden figures that you're constantly revealing. Lord, we ask you to expand their territory. Move upon their lives like never before. Bless them, Father God, that they will see you in the midst of their dangers, that they will be a blessing to others. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Those of you who are are watching us on broadcast, please share with your family members and friends to go to the New Beginning Church page, the one with the big blue building laying on the ground, and like that page. Turn on your notification so when technology begins to act up on my personal page, you'll get a notification from the New Beginning page. It's New Beginning Church. New Beginning Church is as a picture of the big blue cross laying on the ground. Please, ma'am, please, sir, like that page and turn on your notification button for that page. Also, turn on your notification button for Matthew Davis page, Carolyn Orr Davis page, Kevin Whitlock's page, and your Miles page. Therefore, you'll be alerted when there's Sunday school going on as well. Until next time, thank you so much. We're in the midst of our Bible listening. We're in the midst of our Bible listening. We're looking forward to seeing your journal. Go ahead and listen to the Bible daily. I posted it again this morning about 2 o'clock. Go ahead and listen to your Bible daily. If you're behind, catch up and journal what the Lord, write what the Lord is saying in your spirit. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you so much.